So finally this evening, for so many families, spring is the time to think big, look at new houses and dream about a step up to a better neighborhood. This year, though, it's not that easy. High prices, low inventory and considerably higher interest rates. Rogers Healy has been here before helping us with an insider's view on the emerging spring real estate market. Welcome back to Centerpoint. Thanks for having me. I purposely matched the rest of the set today. <laughs> so, you know, there's pluses and minuses right now, I guess, depending on whether you're a seller or a buyer. Low inventory, that helps the seller. But these interest rates are up about, what, 4.5%? Yeah, I think so we're... That's not good. Yeah, I mean, to be under 7%, as crazy as it sounds, is a, a big win relative to the last six months. But... Yeah, it, it's not really a market that favors buyers really or sellers unless you're thinking shorter term, which we've never really seen, you know, especially first time buyers. We were talking about this before we started Aaron. Most people buy a property wanting to stay there five to seven years, but now it's really of a shorter term play, maybe mm. two to three years, which for what it's worth, you know, that gives us a different kind of job security. Yeah. Tell me about if you're a seller right now, what are you thinking? I mean, it's on, it's the same thing that they were thinking a year or two ago. You know, obviously, if you list something for a dollar and it sells for a dollar fifty, you're probably going to go have to go buy something for a dollar seventy. So it, it's it's kind of apples to apples, as crazy as it sounds. So I think that, you know, giving people the sense of reality, I think a realtor is needed now differently than they were a few years ago. But again, it's relative. If you sell at an all time high, you're probably buying at an all time high. And so now the biggest factor that's making a difference, like you said, interest rates are double what they were a year ago. So that's going to change the trends unlike we've ever seen before, which again will make the real estate market that much more sustainable because we have millennials that are the driving force and they don't want to make long term decisions anyway, just historically. And COVID during the shutdowns, yeah. people wanted to get out of the cities, get to the suburbs and the market went berserk. Yeah which again, understandably so, but even with that to be said, the people that move to places like Dallas, where we are from California, from New York, from Chicago, from Miami, these places that, you know, there's a reason that you live there in the first place. You come to Dallas and it's like, it's centrally located and what do we do? They're potentially moving back, right? So I think that's gonna get things a little bit, you know, evened out, but yeah, COVID was a reset for everybody, myself included. And I think what people decided to do is actually get back to the American dream of owning their own home. And then when they're around each other 25 hours a day, they wanted more space. So, you know, we've seen a boom that hasn't really slowed down. So let's say I'm a seller right now. What's your advice to me? Uh, be realistic. I mean, it's the same advice I'd give somebody three and a half years ago before COVID. You got, you got to be realistic. And I think you got to end, you got to start with the end in mind, which means like if you're buying a house, you should look at it as your home before an investment first, but also realize that there's factors that support moving wherever it is. And I think that we've seen this, you know, uh, the, bent, the pent up demand for four or five months when nobody was doing anything, March through, you know, April or June of, of 20, it changed people's psyche with buying toilet paper and buying real estate. And now that it's done this, I think people are starting to think logically again, which I think is healthy. So yeah, you know, ha have an end goal in mind and don't think forever. Realize that in, whether you're our age or you're younger, you're older, it might not be your forever home, which that's okay too. Thank you for saying our age, by the way. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you got great hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm the buyer. Yeah. What, what advice are you giving me? I want that house. I want that house. Then, then buy it. If you can afford it, then buy it. You know, time kills all deals. Whether it's in real estate, venture capital, or being a you know a, a newspaper delivery person, time kills all deals. If you find something that is relatively appealing to you, leverage the contract. In a state like Texas, the buyer has a due diligence period that if they wake up tomorrow and they have time left and they don't like the smell of the backyard, the color of the front door, you can terminate, right? And it's called an option period for a reason, but you have to also realize that nothing is perfect. And if you wanna make money in real estate, the best way to make money is on the purchase, right? If you can buy into a property that needs a little bit of work, you can make that money up on the back end. So yeah, you, you gotta strike while the iron's hot, whatever iron you're dealing with. Quick, what's the hottest market right now or hottest, I guess in the region, and what's the, what's the worst market right now? Yeah, I'd rather not say the worst market, but I think the markets that the most difficult markets to get into have always been San Francisco, Chicago, Manhattan for a reason. It's because they're densely populated with people that have a higher net worth than places like Indiana, Nebraska, Texas. So I, I think right now it's all relative where the rule of real estate up until two or three years ago was always about location. And I think what we saw shift, what it was about affordability. So people can go and start over and you've seen a big boom in the Midwest where like five years ago, you couldn't touch the Midwest with a 20 foot pole as far as a destination location. But now it's happening because again, 
people's priorities for the most part have been reset. So, you know, I, I think it's what we saw a few years ago, just a little bit more exaggerated now. Rogers, good to have you on set. Thanks for Appreciate having me. it. Pleasure.